are we living in dangerous times is the world headed for another world war or if not a world war maybe war between two countries or three countries just like we are seeing between russia and ukraine will there be a nuclear war what are its chances is the world going to become more dangerous place to live in or will there be more peace in the next couple of decades how exactly does the geopolitical scenario looks like well if you're looking for answer to such questions i have a book to recommend it's called war time the world in danger by career diplomat rajiv dogra ji so let's see what rajiv ji has to say about war and geopolitics keep watching hello everyone welcome once again to books wale bhaiya i am abhishek and today i am talking about the book war time the world in danger by career diplomat rajiv dogra ji Rajiv ji served as India's ambassador to Romania and Italy. He also served as India's last consul general to Karachi. Rajiv is a prolific author. This is his seventh book. He has already authored six other books, both fiction and non-fiction. He is also a columnist and writes for various newspapers of repute. Coming to the book, this book talks about, as I said, geopolitics and whether there will be, is there likely to be a war just like we are seeing currently. Well, Rajiv ji's analysis suggests that yes, there are likely to be more wars in the future. Whether it will be a world war or not, or whether it will be conflicts between some countries, both possibilities are there. However, he says that the next 10 to 20 years are likely to see more wars, maybe between China and India, or between. China India and Pakistan maybe between China versus Taiwan all these possibilities are there however the idea of this book is not only about war but also about understanding what is the geopolitical situation today and for explaining that he has dedicated several chapters individual chapters to various countries uh, important countries on the globe such as India China uh, Russia US Afghanistan and he gives a detailed analysis taking a cue from their history as to what events occurred in those countries which have shaped the world as we know it today so for example he has talked about Afghanistan i mean US has been had fought a war for close to 20 years in Afghanistan Pakistan US fought a war in Iraq as well and nothing came out of it it just led to wastage of a lot of money and resources for the United States and uh, Afghanistan is back to square one the Taliban has risen again he talks about China which he argues is undoubtedly going to emerge as a superpower uh, and we are already seeing signs of it is building infrastructure on a massive scale with an aim to you can say dominate the world so he clearly mentions that US hegemony is likely to end Uh, and china is likely to take center stage however he has a word of caution that us may not be the supreme power or the world may not be as unipolar as it is currently in the next 15 to 20 years but the united states at the same time is not going to lose its importance in world affairs however it just it's just that it may not be that important or it may not cast its influence in the way it has done till so far interestingly also points out about russia that russia like when you talk of geopolitics we say about china going to dominate the world but he makes it very clear that along with china we cannot just you know discount russia we just cannot neglect russia because maybe there may be a china russia combined sort of thing in the future which may play an important role in the world order other than russia and china and he also talks about india and he says that yet india has yet not is yet not in a position where it can dominate the world order it will be an important country for the world as well due to sheer size and everything but when it comes to a geopolitical or dominating the world discourse it is not near to that therein from the history he gives certain examples uh, of you can say the follies committed by uh, india in the past for example he talked about a us report which suggested by us think tank that india's foreign policy has an imprint of gandhian and buddhist principles which may may not be practical every time especially when it comes to uh, dealing with the world so it gives the example of uh, pandit nehru who put lot of faith in china only to see a, a war with china in 1962 undoubtedly china was uh, not a country he should have trusted however unfortunately he did that and he uh, India suffered because because of his trust in China and China's misadventures. He also gave the example of Indira Gandhi, who while won the war in 1971 against Pakistan, but did not use it on the negotiating negotiating table and gave the uh, the portion or uh, the portion occupied back to Pakistan and also released the prisoners of war without asking practically anything in return. So he has taken a lot of examples of various countries, uh, what happens happened in the history of these countries and how 
those factors those events that determine the world as we see it today so example he gave the example us that us practically dominated the world after the end of the second world war it built a technologically militarily and economically strong country however uh, after a certain period of time you can see the end of us hegemony started and he, the best examples gave are the war in iraq the war in afghanistan which led to uh, outpouring of so many trillions of dollars which actually led to nothing us did not achieve anything in iraq and in afghanistan also it, it packed its bag after 20 years and we are just seeing afghanistan in the way it was 20 years ago the taliban is done again and is ruling the country other than china as i said he talks about russia as well he talks about the europe as well so now people are talking about the decline of of europe however he has a word of uh, uh, not not caution but he has a word of advice that once again just like us you cannot just write off europe from the world map you just cannot say that europe is not going to be an important partner in in the world in fact he highlights that how china through its dominance has ensured that several smaller european countries are warming up to china so whether we will see a china europe kind of combine well that's a little difficult to predict but this is what is happening and he is someone who says that uh, you cannot just ignore uh, europe as a whole at least some countries are going to occupy a dominant position however there is absolutely no doubt that it is china which is going to be an important player there may be a scenario wherein china and maybe china and russia on one hand maybe us and europe and perhaps india depending on uh, how it how it performs economically and in other ways in the next couple of decades he also highlighted some of the conflicts taking place in india and how they pose a challenge to india in the coming decades so yes he argues that we may not be seeing a unipolar world but uh, when it changes the world order changes whether there will be another unipolar world crafted by which and the china which will be led by china he has he's not uh, completely agrees with that because he said there are certain issues within china as well such as related to democracy related to uh, weak links in the chinese economy which may have challenges for china as well so the more likely scenario you say is a multipolar world with of course these dominant players i like the fact in this book is that he has used he has given a lot of historical information which helps us make sense of the world uh, as it is today and i think uh, after reading this i would not call it just a book i will call it an encyclopedia because practically everything which is there to know about geopolitical history is is more or less covered in this book and all the historical information and all the current information gives you a lot of you can say background to understand the world we are living in another thing which i liked in this book is talking of geopolitics and talking of wars and talking of what the world is likely to look like in the next 10 to 20 years he also talked about the other factors which are as important as war for example ecological imbalances uh or we are already seeing situations like covid-19 which may uh, you know disturb the world as we have already seen in the last two years in ecological balance he has mentioned something very important that several dams in the united states and other countries are very old and we may likely to see an ecological disasters happening there these dams are 50 60 70 years old and are not likely to be as efficient and this is something he believes is going to be very important so the trouble when we see in the world is not likely to come from wars alone from ecological imbalances as well as situation like covid-19 which is uh, one can say was maybe not handled very well by by the global uh, powers by various countries all of that gives a very comprehensive account of the world we are living in he has also in fact interestingly dedicated a full chapter to artificial intelligence which he thinks is going to play a very important role in geopolitics when he talks about ai i think many of us will agree that artificial intelligence or data is is the new oil for the world and it's going to play a very important role in not just in domestic economy as well as in geopolitics mind you we are talking about ai we are talking about um, advanced machines robots and lot many things and i think talking about ai in the context of geopolitics indicates uh, rajiv ji's ability to understand uh, you know the world as we see in a more comprehensive manner here not just stuck to the old ways of diplomacy as as we call it and that's indeed a very interesting chapter to read all in all as i just mentioned i call it not just a book but an encyclopedia in geopolitics lot of insights lot of information if you are really looking forward to read something which helps you understand the world as you know it in a better manner well here is this book one book i strongly recommend thank you very much for watching the video if you think i did a good job please give a thumbs up 
सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल फॉर मोर रिव्यूज थैंक यू वेरी मच